extent, you know, what I'm going to be doing is is just showing you some some of the ways in which I've been using um, Google Sheets to um, you know to to organize data for for various purposes. And you know, for some of you, if, if, especially if you have used Google Sheets, you you might have a, a different um, you know shortcut. And certainly, I'd be more than happy for for you to to share you know what what you know um, in the interest of of everybody uh, learning. So, as educators, you know, we often we've got mark sheets, we've got register sheets. Um, if you are a sports coach or sports manager, uh, you know, for especially sports like cricket, you will also have a lot of data that you need to try and make some sort of sense of. And so that's where spreadsheets come in very, very handy because you can actually um, do all sorts of things with that, with that data. You can get, you know, averages, medians, means, um, look for variances, etc. But very often when the information is in some sort of a table format, it's, it's still you know, quite difficult to, to make sense of, of what you're looking at. And so for that reason, um, visualizing the data uh, makes, makes a quick impression. And especially when it comes to having to make some sort of decision um, or to identify some kind of a trend, then visualization of the data is very, very uh, important. Okay. So we are going to be using um, Google's version of, of Excel, basically. Okay, so we're all familiar with Microsoft Excel. And um, I must be honest, you know, I, I was uh, a keen user of Microsoft Excel for, for many, many years. And, you know, when I went to, to Parkins College in 2014, um, it's a Google school. So, you know, we, we use all of, all of the Google apps. And, um, you know, really that the penny just dropped, I, I realized that, that Google Sheets, um, you know, pretty much does as, as much as Excel does, but with the added advantage that it makes it possible to collaborate with other people. So you can open a, a Google Sheet and um, then you can actually share that with as many people as you like, and they can then, um, you, you know, give their inputs um, to, to whatever project it is uh, that is being worked on, on, on that sheet. Okay. Um, so, so we're going to take a look at, at the pretty much the two contexts that I think all of us would be using the spreadsheets in. We're then going to have a look at the various types of um, spreadsheets that, um, sorry, the various types of, of charts that would be of interest to us. So specifically, we're going to have a look at, at line graphs, column charts, um, pie charts, and we are also going to have a look at um, a, a correlation. Okay, so sometimes one wants to, for example, take a look at, you know, what is the correlation between marks in, in the June exams and then marks in the prelim exams? Because that also helps you to kind of predict what, um, you know, what, what the end results might be. Okay, and, you know, the, the reason for why you'd want to do that is, is, to, is to make plans, for example, for, for tutorial classes or intervention and so on. So yeah, so you certainly are going to be working it during the session, you are going to be playing around with all that data. And then I'll also show you um, that with the Google Sheets, these things are very, very intuitive. So you know, the minute you uh, take a look at some data, it, it is going to, uh, you know, decide, okay, well, this is going to work very, very well for a line chart, or it's a line graph, what's going to work very well for a pie chart and so on and um, you might want to actually change uh, what uh, you know what chart has been suggested by the, the Google Sheet. Okay so as I said to you the, the orientation pretty much um, if I think of myself there are two major ways or two major reasons why I use 
um, information in charts. Okay, so firstly, data visualization for administration. So once again, you know, if you've got a spreadsheet, you've got columns, you've got rows, you've got lots of numbers in them, and uh, you want to try and um, make some sort of a decision based on, on that data. So visualizing the data makes it possible for you to do that uh, quickly and efficiently. And then the other thing um, where you would want data visualization is, is for content. So if, for example, you are making notes uh, for your learners, if you are making some PowerPoint or Google Slides, um, then being able to present information in, in some sort of a chart format like, like a pie chart uh, makes it a lot easier for, for the viewers to digest. Okay, so data visualization for content such as um, worksheets or tests or exams, etc. Those are the two major ways in which, um, which I think we would all find some use for, for charts. Okay, so typically, you know, in a spreadsheet, you've got your, your columns. So I've got my first column here, which is now got, uh, it says category one, two, three, four. Then the second column, you know, series one of data, the third column is series two of data, and, and so on, okay? So the columns go vertically, okay? So I've got my first column, which, which typically in a spreadsheet is gonna be column A, then we've got column B, column C, column D. It goes all the way across to Z, and then it starts with A, 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 B, A, C, etc. Okay, so you can literally have you know, hundreds of, of columns across. And then of course your rows. So in my first row, I've got, um, it says here series one, two, three. In the, sec in the second row, it's now saying category one. Then it's got 4.3, 2.4, etc. And yeah, literally you can have thousands of rows in, in your spreadsheet. Okay, so the data series consists of related data points in a chart. And um, typically that data then is going to be used to create, for example, in this case, we've got um, a, a bar chart, all right? So very often when you use the data from your spreadsheet, it's going to generate um, a chart for you very quickly, but it's not always going to be sure of what that that. Um, chart title needs to be. So that's where you are going to need to just do a little bit of um, manipulation of your chart. Okay, so it should also very, very clearly describe what the chart is illustrating. The legend is, um, it identifies which data series and which color, um, yeah, so it identifies which data series each color on the chart represents. Um, for example, this, this light blue column represents, in this case, this person called Robert Johnson. The orange one represents uh, Don Gallister. And then the, the gray one represents this person, June, June de Winter. Okay. So your vertical axis, okay, the Y axis, uh, mathematically speaking, is the vertical part of the chart. So it measures the value of the columns and it's also called the value axis. And so in this case, for, for this particular data set, it's measured the value of the, of, the, of the quarterly sales of each of these individuals across the four quarters. Right, so our horizontal axis, the X axis is the horizontal part of the chart and it identifies the various categories in the chart and each sales quarter is placed in its own group as you can see there. All right, so when you've got many choices, okay, you've, you've got to figure out what, what chart is, is going to work best. So remember that the whole point of this data visualization is, is to try and make sense of a lot of data, to try and make it meaningful, to try and make it understandable and digestible. All right, so the various types of charts on, on offer, it's... Um, you know, so whether you are using Excel or whether you are using Google Sheets, um, there will be a whole lot of different ones on offer. So the ones that we are going to be taking a look at 
um, this, this morning, mostly, is we're going to be having a look at these various column charts. Okay, very often, you know, we can put them as bar charts. We're going to have a look at different ways in which you can create pie charts. Um, we'll have a look at line graphs, and then we're also going to have a look at, at scatter plots. Okay. So the two major things that, that we are going to be focusing on is, is chart editor. Okay, so using data that we've got in our spreadsheet, we then use the chart editor to actually set up what type of chart we, we would like to use. So whether it's a line graph, area graph, column, pie chart, etc. And then we will be using the customize function to actually um, make changes to the chart style, the chart and axis titles, um, the legend, the horizontal axis, vertical axis, grid lines and ticks. Okay. All right. And so that's it. That's the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, There's time to go to the beach. All right. I was just kidding about that. Uh, okay. So what we want to do is, is have a look at, um, at uh, firstly, what, what you might do with some, some data for, for a, a class, right? Let me just take a look at Right, so, so what I've got here is I've, is I've got some actual marks from, from my, my matric class, okay? So, you know, is complying with the Popier Act, um, section 2.3a uh, part one, um, which means I can't reveal the actual names of people. I've gone and put some time into just changing the names to protect the innocent. So we've got some people here like Justin Case, Robin Banks, Rose Bush, Mike Stand, etc. And um, we're going to use this data to, to show what uh, can be done with charts. All right, so the fact is that this is actual data, all right? These are actual marks that have been scored by various learners in, in my metric um, class. All right, so what I can do here is, you know, if, if I want to try and get some sort of picture of what intervention might be necessary, what I can do is I can actually go and have a look at what, what is the average for, 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 for these learners, okay, for these various tests. So I'm going to type in an equal sign and then I'm going to type in average. Okay? And then it's very, very intuitive because it's saying, okay, well, what, what do you want? The average from B2 to B23, and that's exactly what I want. So I don't even need to continue typing. I can literally just press enter. And now it's giving me the average for, for that particular class test. Now, what I would like to do is just to go and reduce that decimal. Okay, so I'm going to reduce that decimal so that it actually gives me a, a whole number. And I'm just going to say the average. I'm going to make that bold. You just bold the whole column. I'm oh, sorry, the whole row. And now here's a really, really neat trick. I don't need to go and um, go through the same process that I did to get that average, if I just go to the bottom right hand side of, of this little square until it makes a plus, okay, until it makes a plus, I click on that little plus and I simply drag over to the right hand side and basically what it's done is it's now quickly worked out the average for all of, um, for all of these tests, okay? So I can, I can see there what the average was for, um, you know, the chapter one's test, chapter two's test, chapter three's test, and then what the official control test um, average is. Okay. All right. So, um, so what I can do now is, is I can actually go and create a, um, a bar chart of that. Okay. I know this is very, very simple, um, data that we're working with, okay, but uh, let's just see here, okay, so I'm going to type in here, um, let me just add a few more rows, okay, 
So for example, I can say here, um, so percentage, oops, okay, so percentage. So I can just say here, test one, test two. And then again, what I can do to speed things up is you can, you can copy the first two, go down to that little plus sign, and then if you drag down, it will just fill it up with the rest of the numbers that you need. Okay. In this case, I don't need those two over there. And I want this one to be called control test. And so if I put in these averages, so I've got 69, 8, 64, and in this case, 56. Now I can actually go and create some sort of a chart with this. Okay. So what I do is I select the area that I want to make a chart out of. Okay. Select the entire area and then I can go into insert. Now there are all sorts of things that one can insert into, in, into these cells or the area that you have um, chosen. But what we're focusing on this morning, obviously, is we're having a look at these various charts, right? So you'll see that it automatically, it's just decided, okay, you know what? Um, it looks like you want to, to see what the sort of the trend is in these um, tests over time. Okay, so as it stands there, we've, we've got something that already is, is, is visually um, e easy to use. So if you, for example, are a head of department or subject leader or whatever the case may be, and you want to, to have a look at an intervention program for your learners before, let's say, the June exams, and you need to look at where you're going to spend more time. Let's say you've, you've decided on, on a four hour workshop on a Saturday morning, um, and you want to go and have a look at, at where you need to spend more time. And it's, it's a lot easier when, when you look at, at data in this format, because you can see, okay, test one, the average is relatively high. Test two seems to be a little bit more of a, a, a challenge or a problem. And, um, that's where you, you're going to need to to focus more time. All right. Now, this heading over here is 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 not really very very helpful at all. Okay, it it tells us nothing. Okay, so we need to change that so that it actually becomes meaningful. So, all I need to do is is to is to literally to click in the area where the heading is going to be okay and you'll see that it's now switched me from setup okay so the setup it's 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 automatically chosen a column chart okay it's automatically chosen a column chart if i click on the drop down it's it's going to give me all sorts of of options okay it can say okay well what do you want do you want a line chart now a line chart in this case is not not really helpful because your line chart typically more or less to some sort of time series. So if you want to have a look at the change in data over a period of time, then that is uh, that would be more appropriate. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of different um, options that we can choose over here, all right? So that's what the, the setup is all about, okay? So I don't want um, this to be a line graph that's it's not um, appropriate for, for the data that I'm using at this stage. So I've got two options here. I can either go and click on no, I want the column chart, or I can simply click on the undo, all right? So it's gonna undo what I just did previously. And so very often that's that's a nice shortcut um, just to you know get back to where you started a, a step, one step ago. So remember that over here, I want to actually change this heading. So all I do is I actually go to, to what I want to change. In this case, I click on um, this area, which gives us the chart title. So it says, okay, you want to work with the chart title. At the moment, the title text is just saying percentage versus. So it, it, it has no real idea of, <laughs> of what the data presents. Um, 
So I'm going to um, change this. So I'm going to say, all right, it's 2023, grade 12, economics, quarter one, test results. Okay. So as you can see, that that's already a whole lot better. That that now that gives us um, some some meaning. Okay. Um, I would like this heading to to stand out better, to be um, uh, you know bold. Um, it's automatically selected a title text color, which is this kind of light gray. Uh, I can make it whatever color I want. Okay, so I can make that green or I can make it, um, in this case, black, I think is appropriate. It's gonna, you know, just um, make this stand out better. And then, of course, a chart title is always gonna be nice if you center it, okay. Now, another thing, so I very often, for my subject, for economics, I need to make various bar charts, line graphs, pie charts, etc. But very often I find that the data on the vertical axis and, and sorry, the, the, the labels on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis tend to be quite small. So again, to change that, it's very, very easy. Okay, so all I do is I simply click on anywhere um, in, in the vicinity of this, these uh, labels that I want to change. Okay, let's just try it again. Okay, all right, so I double clicked on it and it's saying, right, now we're dealing with the vertical axis, okay? The label font size, it's automatically selected it, and I think it typically defaults to, that looks like 10. So I want that to be much bigger. So I can just click on, on 18, okay? And that is a lot easier to, to deal with. Because uh, my, my phone was just ringing, it's probably just some call center wanting to sell me life insurance again. Um, but I thought, you know, maybe I, internet has dropped or something and, and it might be you trying to call me, all right. Uh, all right, so 18 looks a little bit big over there. I'll just change that to 16. That looks around about right. So I can do exactly the same here for on the horizontal axis. Uh, I just click on that and I'm going to change this to, uh, whoops, not text color. I'm going to change that to label font size and I make that, what did I say? The previous one was 14. There we go. So that's a lot better, of course. We can, we can do all kinds of things with this, like make it italics, we can make it bold. Um, so whatever it is that you want to do to to make that, um, it, you know, visually appealing. All right. Then you'll see that over here, the um, the vertical axis title is is small and, and doesn't really stand out very well. Okay. So there as well, I want to change that so that it, it it's, um, really understandable, makes the data understandable, okay? So this is the average uh, percent mark obtained, okay? And again, I want to make that a bit bigger so that it's, it's easier to see, all right? And let's just change that to bold, there we go. All right, so I think, you know, the one thing that, that is still missing over here is that we don't have a horizontal axis label, all right? And you can see it's there's, there's nothing here, right? So what I can do is I can go now to horizontal axis, okay? So customize, chart and axis titles, okay? So it's got the vertical axis title. I want now a horizontal axis title. Okay, and I will type in there, um, test in series. And again, I'm just gonna change that, make that a bit bigger. And I'm gonna make the, make that bold. And there we go. All right. Now I can close the chart editor. I'm, I'm happy with, with what I see over there. Um, I'm just gonna move this over here and uh, yeah that that gives us a, a pretty usable graph 
Now, something else that you that you might want to add is to is to add in in this case some horizontal grid lines. Okay, so if we if we add in some more horiz horizontal grid lines, then it's easy because I can't quite see here that it's you know this is somewhere between 60 and 80. I can't quite tell what that average is over there. Okay, so again, if I just click anywhere in the sheet, okay, in this case I'm going to double click on it, okay. And I want to customize, in this case, my grid lines and ticks, okay? So I click on, on this grid lines and ticks. It's not on the horizontal axis that I want to add more grid lines. It's here on the vertical axis that I want to add more grid lines, okay? So if I click on the drop down, I choose vertical axis. Now, as you can see, it goes zero up to 20. So if I add in four um, grid lines, uh, yeah, four, then that should give me intervals of five. So each each line, each line that I see here on the vertical axis is going to actually give us an interval um, of 5%. Okay, so let me just go on here to, so it's the um, minor count. So I want four. And I can click, let's see, so that's going to give us 5, 10, 15, sorry, 5, 10, 15. Okay, so 4 is too much. I need to make that 3. So it's adding in 3 grid lines. So that's going to give me 5, 10, 15, and now that's up to 20. Obviously, you know, you can, you can add in a whole lot more. You could make that 9 if you want. So that's going to give you, you know, a lot sharper kind of accuracy. Um, but for my purposes, it's, I think it's going to be good enough if I just add in three over there. So that I've got five, 10, 15, and uh, 20. Right. So now I can close that. Now, of course, the question is, okay, well, you know, now what, what exactly do I do with this if I want to put this in my subject leaders report so that I can tell my academic manager I have a plan in place for, for intervention? then you know I, I want to be able to put this into into my my google doc okay so what one does now you just click anywhere in this particular um, uh, chart item and then the three little dots that you see at the at the top right hand side okay so let me just do this as well okay so i can of course i can make this you know bigger or smaller simply by clicking on on a corner okay so one just has to be careful how you drag it okay um, because that that will sort of change the the dimensions okay so you don't, you don't want to do something like that because now again it's, you know, it becomes a bit difficult to use um, so keep it keep it in a in a format that that is going to uh, make sense All right so if you're clicking in one of the corners and dragging out then it will keep the proportions of the width and and the height of of that particular um, item okay uh, so yeah so what what i would like to do now is i'm going to download the chart okay so i clicked on the three little dots at the top here and I go download chart and I want this to be a portable networks graphic image. Okay, so PNG, that's a portable networks graphic image. And so when I do that, it's going to say, okay, well, where do you want it? Uh, on, on your um, desktop, in documents or wherever. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to say, you know what, just just put it on my desktop for me, and that's that's good enough for me. Okay, all right. So let's let's take a quick look at what that thing looks like. Okay, so it's floating around over here. There it is on my desktop. That's what this graph looks like. So if I want that now in a Google Doc or a Word Doc or whatever it is. I prefer, of course, using Google Docs because um, it makes collaboration and cloud-based um, 
cloud-based uh, collaboration much easier. So literally all I need to do now is I can literally just drag that thing and drop it into my Google Doc and, and there it is. Okay, so for my subject leaders report, I can show that, you know, there's been um, some, some regular uh, informal tests. Um, I have analyzed the data and um, I can see uh, where I need to, to put in some intervention. Okay. All right. At this stage, I'm just going to quickly check in, see if there are any questions. Yeah, I don't see anything there. All right. All right, let me just quickly check. So I made a kind of a little video series on, on all of these various charts for my learners. So I'm sort of just following along with my kind of a little script. So we've had a look at um, bar chart. Hi, Craig. Um, yes. I think because you don't have any questions, everybody is also working along with you. Yeah. Um, so fantastic. Thank you. OK, yeah, that, that's great. I'm, I'm more than happy for people to play around in the background. That, that's awesome. That's really what what we would want to see, what we would want to see here. Okay. Um, oh, so look at that. So I went and, and worked out those average. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now um, I've, I've got here the the test scores average. Okay, so for for each of these learners. Okay, so Justin Case, Robin Banks, Rose Bush, etc. So what I did was was I've, I've gone. In fact, I'm just going to delete this just to, sh to show everybody how you can how you can do this. Um, okay, so if I delete that. Okay, so I've got I've got all of these learners. They've done you know a test on chapter one, a test on chapter two, a test on chapter three, etc. So I would like to to actually have a look at what each learner's average is across across these various um, assessments okay so all i do again i press the equals button okay and look at that it's it's intuitive it said okay well you know we're guessing that you would like to work out the average for this this particular candidate just in case um for his test for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and literally all I need to do is, is to press enter. Okay, and there we go. So it's worked out this learner's average. He's got 45.6, etc. cetera, uh, in, infinite. So what I want to do is I just want to reduce that, the number of decimal places. I'm going to reduce it to a whole number. Um, and then of course, yeah, I don't want to have to go and do that for every single learner individually. So all I do is I click on, on the cell, move down to the bottom right-hand side of the cell, click once it, once it makes a little plus sign. All I do is I click and I just drag down and it's just copying that formula into, into that column. Okay. So that, that, of course, is a, is a great time saver and, and a very neat little trick, I think, you, um, doing, doing that drag function. Okay. Uh, there was something I wanted to mention about this as well. Uh, just trying to think. Um, yeah. So I've, I've got these averages for these people. So what I've, what I've done now is, is I've gone and, and, and copied these averages, okay, test scores averages to over there. Now what one needs to be careful with this, okay, so if I take if I take this, okay, so I'm just going to command C. Okay, so I'm gonna remove these test scores averages over here. Okay. Right. So if I go command or control V, okay, you see it says uh, well you know there was a formula that calculated the average across three columns. Now, you know, those three columns are, are not there. So it's just giving me this error message. So what I need to do is I need to decide. So I need, I need to tell the, the, the spreadsheet that I just want the values. Okay. 
So when I when I click on this little um, what do you call it this clipboard, then it it gives me these options. So I'm saying okay, paste the values only, and there we go. Okay, so that's how I've been able to to basically transfer all of this information, these averages, um, into into this column over here to give me the test scores average. Okay. Now at this stage, um, I'm I'm interested in in seeing, you know, for for each of these learners, um, some some sort of uh, you know a chart which which just shows us the relationship between the data. Okay. So of course this is you know this is a class of 22 people. So there's a few things I could do here. So I'm just going to go and grab that data and I go to insert and I'm going to go again to chart of course and there we go okay so this is going to show for each person it's going to show for each person um, you know how they've done it's just going to get a bit bigger so this person just in case so we can see you know uh, th this is the legend, right? So it tells us their test scores average is in blue and their control test percentage is is in red. Okay, so this works fine if there's not too much data, but you know, we've got 22 people in this class. So, you know, that, that's, that's a little bit busy, um, I, I think. Um, what what I can do here, what what would be very interesting, is to see what the correlation is uh, between the data. Okay, because then it it also helps with planning for next year. Okay, if I can see clearly what the relationship is between what the learners are scoring for for their class tests and what they are scoring for their control tests. Okay. And so over time, if, if I see some sort of a pattern, if I can see, right, um, the, 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 the pattern is negative, okay, then I can put some sort of intervention in place for these learners. All right, so I'm not going to spend time changing um, the, the, the headings and things like that, the, the chart titles, because I've already shown you how to do that. Just the one thing I do want to show you is if, if I don't like the, what, you know, the, the legend, I don't like what it says, I, I can um, edit that as well. So I've just double clicked on it and uh, the legend, um, uh, let's see where is it? Session auto. So anyone can edit that. Just oh, there it is. Yeah. So test scores average percentage. So I can now go and just say test um, test average, okay? And it's it's changed that now. It's changed the legend to to what I want it to be, okay? Right. So as I said to you, that that's a little bit busy. That that's not really going to help me very much at this stage. So I'm just going to. Um, delete this chart okay let's have a look at the correlation between the test scores average and the control test okay so if i copy all of that or just select all of the data i'm going to go up to insert and i'm going to chart now remember it's you know intuitively decided okay well you know we'll give you a column chart but that's not what i want okay I'm going here to, to the setter. I click on the drop down. No, sorry, not the setter. So let's go to custom. Uh, yeah, no. So column chart. Okay, so let me just try that again. It's automatically selected setter. It's automatically selected it for column chart. Click on the drop down. Now I can get. Google Sheets to do a regression analysis on it. Okay, so I can say, okay, let's let's make a scatter plot out of this. All right. So each one of these um, 
So it's, it's showing us in this case what these specific learners have scored for their, their test scores and, and their control test average. Okay. Uh, I don't actually need the names. Okay, so a little bit wrong over there. I'm just going to delete this quickly. So what I do want, the, the names are actually irrelevant. Okay, the names are irrelevant. What is important here is the relationship between the test scores average and the control test. Okay, let's just get rid of this over here. Okay, so I want the test scores average and the control test. Okay, so going over there, up to insert, we go to chart, and I'm going to change this so that it is a scatter plot. Okay. So now each one of these little dots that you see here, okay, each one of these little dots, it's actually showing one particular individual. Okay. So this one over here that I'm pointing to with the mouse pointer. That's showing one single individual. It's showing us what this person got for their control test and what they scored for their test scores average. Okay. So, um, again, what I would like to do here just to, to make the data a little bit more readable is I'm going to go to my grid lines and ticks. On the vertical axis, I want some uh minor grid lines so i'm going to make that four because that gives us five ten fifteen twenty twenty five so that's a lot a lot easier to see now okay so if that's five ten fifteen twenty so you can see this is about twenty two um on, on for the control test average and then i'm also going to add in some extra uh, grid lines on the horizontal axis okay so if i click now on horizontal axis, the minor count, again, I'm going to make that four, okay, so that's going to give us, let's see, so that's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, so four is not enough, I need to add in another one, let's see, so we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so as you can see, um, that makes it a lot easier to actually read this data now. Okay, so that, that data point that I'm pointing to over there shows us mm, average of about 24 for the control test. And let's see, so that's 10, 20, it's around about 25 for the test scores average. Okay. Now, what we are interested in over here, because we want to clearly see what, what the, the relationship is between these data. So just sort of roughly, we can, we can see that there's some sort of a a positive relationship there. In other words, the higher the test scores average, typically the higher the control test mark is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on, on any of these data points. I'm going to double click on it. Okay. I just double clicked on it. And now I'm going to, so I can say, right, add data labels. Okay. I don't um, want data labels. I want a trend line. Okay, so now it's actually going to put in a trend line, okay, and so that makes it possible for us to see that, okay, you know what, typically if a learner has scored an average of 60% for, for, for the class tests, then we can expect them to get around about 55% for the control test, okay. In this case, what have we got? Somebody who, so typically if a learner scored around about 70% for, for the test scores, then we can expect, so let's see, that's 50, so, uh, 55, 60, 65, 70. So if they've scored 70% for their test scores, then we can see that they're going to be sitting around about 70% um, for the control test. Okay. Right. I can click on the trend line. Okay, so I can actually go and click on the trend line. Okay. And now I can actually ask it to show the what what that mathematical function is. Okay. So 
I've gone to where it says label and I've here where it says label, it's at the moment it's saying none. So I'm going to say use equation. Okay. And so here it's actually telling us what the equation of, of the line is. Okay. So that again means that we can actually mathematically, uh, you know, go and, and estimate what, what a learner will have scored or, or what they are going to score in their, their control test if we know what their test scores average is. So in this case, it's the, the test scores average is going to be the value on the x-axis. Okay, so if, uh, you know, let's see, if somebody who scored around about 60%, we get too bogged down with the detail. But, you know, let's say we've got someone called Annette Curtin, and Annette Curtin has scored 60, then all I would do is I would say, okay, 60 is the x value, so 1.2 times 60 minus 20.1. And then I should be reasonably uh, able to act, to, to reasonably able to predict what their control test score is going to be. All right. So once again, if I want to drop this off into my, um, you know, in, into my subject leaders report, I'd simply go to download chart and select PNG image. Okay. All right. Um, to see all right now i want to show you so something that that has interested me over the over the years i'm i'm a, a senior marker for economics paper two um you know and, and, and it's interesting to see you know uh, what what learners score for, for 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 paper two compared to to paper one all right and that again helps you to to decide on how you're going to use your time uh what interventions you're going to put in place etc so this is my economics class over the last um few years uh, from 2016 through to 2022 these are the marks that scored for the prelim paper paper one paper two so let's just have a quick look so i simply grab that data go up to insert go to chart and i want to change this um to be a, so it is a scatter chart and of course uh, I want to have a look at um, at what the, the trend is so let's just do that okay back to customers that's interesting let's see let's do that Yeah, so there we go. So it's saying, okay, you want a trend line? There we go. Okay, and again, if I double click on that, um, then I should be able to select. Uh, I should be able to select what. Uh, let's just do that. So a label. So I want to select equation. And so there we go. So from that, I can say, okay, you know what? If if a learner has scored um, such and such a mark for 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 paper one, if they scored 100 out of 150, then um, I can go 0.716 times by uh, whatever they scored for paper one, and then simply add 32.9. And I can then reasonably estimate what that learner is going to score for their prelim paper two. Okay, so as you can see, if one has this kind of data, if you know what your prelim marks are, and you can see what the end of year exam results are, then going forward, it allows you to sort of predict what how your class is is going to do. Okay. Right, just let me check in quickly again. Any questions? Hi, Craig. We just had one question about saving your charts. Where yes. do we save our charts? Okay, right, yeah. Okay, so so remember that, that this chart, um, thanks for that question, that this chart is now sitting in this particular spreadsheet. 
So you can move it around, you know, etc. Uh, et so it will stay there in this particular Google Sheet. Now, the, the, the reason that I really like the Google Sheets and so on is because if I want to share this information with my colleagues or with my academic principal or whatever the case may be, okay, this is not sitting as an Excel spreadsheet on my desktop. And if my computer you know, falls in the pool or, uh, you know, gets stolen or something, all that hard work is gone. I'm literally just going to click on, on share. Okay. And I can I then type in the email addresses of the people that I want to share this with. Okay. So I know that's a little bit off topic from the question that was asked, but literally I can then add in the various people that that I want to, to give access to, okay? And you can set it up in such a way that they can only view or they can comment or they can actually edit, okay? So you always just got to check your, your sharing settings. Now, the question is, right, where is this thing stored? Well, if you go and, and click on this little, so here's the, the, the chart title, okay? At the moment, I'll tell you where this thing is stored. It's actually stored in the cloud, okay? But I want to know where exactly in the cloud is it stored. So if I click on that little um, folder with, with the arrow thing, okay, next to the stop, I click on there, then, um, then it's, it's going to tell me, all right, its current location is, is here in this folder that I've made called Data Visualization Spreadsheets. Now, if I don't want it there, okay, then I, I, can, I can have a look in my Google Drive, okay, at, at the various folders that, that I have got, and then I can go and say, right, I want to move it, I want to move it um, from where it currently is, that's saying, okay, it's moved it, in this case, to WCED training. Um, when I click on that, it's going to show me the folder that I have stored it in. But again, I can actually move that to, to wherever else I, I would like it to be. So at the moment, it's over here in what I call WCED training. Okay. And so... I, I can I can actually move it as well specifically to where I want it in in this folder. All right, so I I can right click on it and say organize. So if I click on organize, I can say move it. And then this is a list of, of the various folders that I've got. Okay, so it's saying suggested. I can click on all locations. I can go, okay, in my drive, where do I want to move it to in, in my drive? Let's see. trying to move something. I don't know if the internet is slow here. Data visualization. Right. Just to port that one for a moment. So I don't know if I've got a slow internet connection, but but basically that's that's how you you would you would move the sheet with everything in it. Okay. Now for some of you, you you probably are thinking, okay, but you know what? I, I want I want a hard copy of this so that I can you know print it out and put it in a file or something like that. So what you can do now is you can click on the three dots and when you go download chart okay you've got these options png image pdf document scalable vector graphics okay so 
If you go PNG image, it's literally just going to save that as is. If you go PDF document, okay, so if I go PDF document, it's going to say, okay, well, where do you want it on your computer? Do you want it in desktop? In my case, I'm going to, I don't want it in the desktop. I want it in my documents. So I'm going to go to C14. I'm going to go to documents. I'm going to go academic in my case. I'm choosing where on my um, on my hard drive I want it. And so I'm going to drop it off over here in my grade 12 folder. And so there we go. Save it. Okay. So if I now go to that folder in my, um, if I go to the folder on, on my hard drive, it's just going to look at the, where is it, academic, grade 12, 12 three. Right, so there it is. Okay, so there's, there's the chart that I've created and it's it's as a PDF. Okay, so it's it's thrown it into a PDF document. All right, so I hope that that answers the question. Yes, thank you, Craig. Okay. Right, let me see what, what else I can show you. Okay, right. So um pie charts are, are very nice as well. Let me just take a look at what I've got over here. Okay. Right, so in in my subject, economics, um, you know, for tests and exam papers, etc., I, I, I need to create data response questions, right, in section B of the paper. And it can be cartoons, it can be graphs, it can be tables, it can be, you know, extract from a newspaper article, etc. Now, you know, I don't want to just go and fill the whole exam paper up with, with tables, with information like that, because, you know, it, it, it makes for a boring paper and there's not enough variety. Okay. So wherever you want to show some sort of um, proportions, okay, whenever you want to show some proportions, then you can use a pie chart. But before we do that, I want to quickly show you how I can work out what the percentage change in, in data is and then we can present that as a um, as, a, as a, a, a line graph okay so I want to see what the percentage changes between 2014 and 2013 spending on durable goods okay so what I do is over here I go um, uh, equals and I'm gonna go open the bracket open another bracket and I'm saying right take this value divide it by the previous year's value close the bracket subtract one from that and then multiply by 100 okay so that's going to work out what the percentage change is in this case from 2013 to 2014. now look at this it, Intuitively, it said, okay, well, presumably you want to do the same thing for all the rest of the data. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to work out what the percentage change in spending on durable goods was from one year to the next, all the way through from 2013 to 2020. So it's given me a suggested auto fill. I simply click on the tick and there we go. It's worked out what the percentage change is from one year to the next. That's very, very busy. I want to reduce the amount of decimal spaces there. Okay. And now this information I would like to put into a line graph. Okay. So I'm just going to grab that over there. And uh, no, let's do this. So I'm going to go on C, drop that over there. Oops. Just another line space so I just double clicked now and I'm going to go insert one row above just a tip if you want to add more rows in one go so you simply shade okay I want to add in another four rows so I've just clicked double click insert four rows above and there we go okay so I'm going to grab that over there come on C drop that over there 
I'm going to grab these values. So this is the percentage, sorry, um, percentage change. Okay. So I don't need 2013 because we don't have a value for it, but let's let's grab that. So command C, I'm copying it. Dropping that there. Go command B. All right, so I simply go and paste the values only. There we go. Okay. Right. Now I want to make a line graph of this. Okay. And so I've shaded in the area. I go insert chart. It's automatically given me a bar chart, which is fine. That can work as well quite nicely for an exam paper. But I want this to be a line graph. So I'm simply going to go down and select line. And there we go. All right. So there as well, I hope you know you found that quite a useful little um, trick. OK. All right. Now, as I said to you, very often we want to show proportions. OK. So what I see over here, what I see over here, so I've forgotten that I've actually made, made a sheet with all that information already. OK. Never mind. At least I got to show you. OK. Now, this is very, very interesting. OK. So this, this is information that I would want to put into an exam paper. I could put it in, in a table format, but I would like to, to create a pie chart out of this information. So pie chart, of course, is going to show the proportions of certain data relative to the total. OK, so when we look at what what South Africans spent on on all these durable goods in 2020, OK, they spent all of this over here. So what I've done is I said, OK, well, there's the total. OK, now I don't I, I've gone and worked out what the percentage uh, or what the proportion of spending is relative to the whole year. OK, now one has to be careful with, with this kind of data, because if if I go and grab this data here. Let's see this. OK. Now watch what happens. So I want to work out, you know, what percentage of the spending was on furniture, um, household appliances, etc. Okay. If I just go and work this out as a percentage of that previous line. Okay. So I type equals. I go. Yeah, I'm going to go that amount divided by that amount, multiplied by 100. Okay. You see, it's giving me, oh, sorry, it's just uh, uh, like that. Okay, so let's try again, equals that amount, divided by that one over there, and then multiply by 100, okay. So, it's saying, okay, you don't want my auto full, so I'm not going to give it to you. All right. Now, as you can see, you know, what, what unfortunately what the formula has done here and here and here and here is it's taken this 205 it comes from the fact that it's taken this value divided by what was on the previous line. This value here is taking this value divided by what was on the previous line, okay, which is not correct. These proportions should add up to 100. So that's why in my formula, in my formula here, I've got to say, take this amount, or this amount, or this amount, or this amount, and it's got to divide it every single time by this absolute value that we see over here. Okay. So in my formula, watch, I've got to say here, dollar B, okay, dollar B, and then dollar 10. So in other words, it's saying, right, it can only be cell B10 that we are dividing by every time. Now, when I copy this down, 
it's going to correctly work out. For example, the personal transport equipment was 44% of spending on durable goods. Computers and related equipment was 4% of the spending on durable goods. Recreational and entertainment goods was 23% of the spending on durable goods, etc. Okay. Right, now of course, uh, I don't even need to go and work out these percentage uh, proportions, okay? If I've got my data, South Africa 2020 components of spending on durable goods, okay? It will work out a pie chart for me automatically, okay? Because what, what the pie chart is is going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to add all of these up and get a total. And then it's automatically in the chart, it's going to show each one of these as a proportion of what the sum of these values is. Okay, so watch how easy it is. I go here, I select the area that I want, I go up to insert, I go to chart, it's decided to give me a uh, a bar chart, but I don't want that. I want a pie chart. Okay, so here chart type. I'm going to scroll down until I find pie. Okay, so I select a pie chart and there it is. Okay, it's created a nice pie chart for me. Okay, again, we can edit our chart title. You know, we can, you know, make this bold and we can um you know change the text color to you know let's make it uh, red for example uh, font size i can make that smaller bigger etc okay right now what what you can also do is you can actually you can put these proportions you can report these inside of each of the slices of the pie chart. So this is quite nice if you want to have a comparative bar chart. Um, so I want to compare the spending on durable goods um, between 2019 and 2020. Okay, so if I just grab all of that over there, I go to insert, I go to chart, see how much time we've got left, 10 minutes, column chart, Second, this is like in that. Okay. So if I do this, okay, so insert, we go chart, and chart. we go all right so here we go so this is quite nice because now it's showing us you know the a, a comparison of the spending on these various items in the two years okay so again what one needs to do is you just need to edit your um you just need to edit the the legend okay so a legend uh we can that so by double clicking on it, auto customize it. this up automatic let's put it at the top so let's just change that so right okay. so here so i can call this so i think this was 2019 there we go and then the red one so i'm just clicking double clicking on it and i'm typing 2020 and there we go okay all right so remember as well one can add you know, title, the chart title, and so on. 
Okay. All right. So, folks, I see we've got eight minutes left. So, I'm just going to move on to some other things. Okay. So, it's awards season at my school next week. Uh, you know, we've got the honors and awards ceremony, and they announce the new prefects and it's sports awards and all that kind of thing. And so I am manager of the under-14 rugby team and I'm manager of the under-19 a cricket team. And we've had to decide who gets, you know, best backline player of the year, best junior player of the year, all that kind of stuff. All right. So I've got all this data, you know, um, from rugby matches and cricket matches, etc. And we've got to decide on you know, who gets who gets the, the various prizes. Okay, so again, this will work out quite nicely as a pie chart. Okay, so I'm selecting the area that I want to make a pie chart of. I'm going to go right insert chart. And there we go. It's given me a pie chart. So now I can see quite easily that this player over here in Tika has scored 34% of the team tries during the season. Next up is, is Tyron. He scored 20% of the tries and so on. All right. So this also, you know, makes it easier when when I send my recommendations to the to the head of sport to say, right, well, these these are the guys I recommend. So instead of giving him an absolute number, uh, you can have a look at the pie chart. Now, I don't know about you, but if I look at this pie chart, uh, it's going to be a front runner for, for for this person, okay, to to get um, best best player of, of of the season, okay. Another one, and so I think I'm going to be finishing on time. Now, cricket stats are very very interesting, okay. So <laughs> if you take a look at all these numbers over here, all right, we've got a lot of information now. It's 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 a real mission to now decide who's going to get, you know, best batsman, best bowler, etc. Okay, so these are the are the stats of all the players, okay, um, in in this team. So now we've got to decide on who gets best batsman award, who gets best bowler award. Okay, so what I've done is I've is I've taken the information. For each of these players, I've taken right the total runs scored, their strike rate, and their average. Okay, so for each of them, I've gone and put the information into into uh, this this little table over here. Now, if I go, those are just numbers. Okay, it's going to be a lot easier if we can visualize this data to actually see who's who. Yeah, right. So again. In this case, I can go right, uh, insert, and I want to set a chart. And here we go. Okay, the picture picture tells you what a thousand words would, would do. Okay, so if we take a look at all of these various players over here. Okay, so by far and away, we can see that this this person Kyle, you know, has contributed the most runs. All right. But you can't just go on that. You've got to have a look at the strike rate of the player. In other words, how many runs per hundred that they've scored. Have a look at their average. Okay. And so, so for each player, it's it's actually giving us a picture of what their contribution was to to the team to, throughout the season. Okay. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to show you. Okay. So I'm interested in seeing who's contributed proportionally the most runs. So I don't want to go and work out, you know, did Kyle contribute, you know, 35.2% of the runs. I don't want to have to sit with the calculator and do that. So literally, if I go there, runs, okay. And I go again to insert, I go to the chart. And yeah, a bar chart shows us very quickly that in this case, it's Kyle. Uh, as I said to you, I can change that now to, to, to the chart style. I can go there, right? Give us a pie chart. And there we go. All right. 
Now, just a few other interesting things that you can do with your pie chart. I see that I've got three minutes left. So what I can do with my pie chart as well is, um, is with my pie chart, I can make it a donut pie chart. Okay, it just makes it a little bit interesting. And if I don't want it to be a donut, I'll just go back to that again. Want it to be a donut chart. I just want it to be a normal pie chart, but I want it to be 3D. Just to make my report look more interesting, I make that a 3D pie chart. Okay. And there we go. So that just looks a bit, bit more interesting.